Hey YouTube, POD7 here once again with another comic book haul video. Uh, hopefully it's not too long. I have a lot of stuff to get through. 123 pictures worth exactly. Um, these are both magnets and I have a little mini fridge in my room and it's starting to get kind of crowded <laughs> on the front. But every time I go in there now it seems like Dave down at Hall of Heroes has a new Batwoman magnet. So I have to quote unquote pick it up so anyway that's enough uh padding it out i guess i don't know i have 123 pictures to get through so we'll start off with the miscellaneous uh we have the street fighter swim shoot swimsuit special from 2016 uh one of the artists that i've followed for I think five five to six years on Tumblr, I believe, um, was featured in this issue as well as I, I heard he was going to be in 2017, so I definitely wanted to pick up that one, and then I found out he was in 2016 as well. Uh, his internet name is Roboto, R-O-B-A-A-T-O. So, let me see if I can find his real name right quick. Yeah, he probably has a really popular uh, Instagram, I imagine. Because that was the first thing that showed up on Google, <clears throat> Google search on my phone. Here's the cover for 2017. I didn't get, I suppose this is a variant. Probably looks like B cover for both of them. Uh, it was the only one that Hall of Heroes had and I'm not really that picky, so. All the news links on here are just saying his online name, not his real name. I think it's Robert Porter or something like that. Uh, but in the new, in the 2017 special, uh, he did a, he got a whole two page spread of uh, Lara from Street Fighter, I believe. So uh, if you hear like random pounding in the background, it's because I live across the street from tennis courts and the local college is starting to practice again. Now that school is almost back in uh, session, so. Um, <clears throat> this was from Cheyenne, Wyoming, when I was on my vacation. I uh, just saw that it's kind of a Wonder Woman-centered Justice League graphic novel, so I figured I'd pick it up. Batman 26, one of those... Uh, comics that I just picked up for the cover because I love Poison Ivy and this is a, a great art style along with this one as well Harley Quinn 23 what can I say it's Harley and Ivy you gotta pick that kind of stuff up uh, <laughs> I managed to pick up a theater sized Wonder Woman poster from Hall of Heroes he had it up in the window and I asked him uh, if he had thought about selling it, and he said, man, I'll just give it to you. You're the first person to even ask about it. So he wrote my name on a post-it note and uh, stuck it to the back of it. So now I just have this giant Gal Gadot poster <laughs> in my room. Uh, picked up Go Go Power Rangers number one. It's kind of a modern retelling of Power Rangers. Uh, Yeah, it's it's really good. Uh, I was gonna compare it to the Justice League Power Rangers tie, uh, team up that's going on right now as well, but uh, there's not really much to compare other than it being the same outfits and Zords. So yeah, it's good. Pick it up. Uh, and I believe this is ending the miscellaneous section, uh, which is probably surprising to people who have followed me for a while since Batwoman is on the screen. Uh, these are the two volumes of Batwoman that I was missing. 
in collected editions. Uh, neither of them came out in hardcover ever, and Batwoman Volume Six has a different spine than all the rest of the than the other five volumes. So I kind of dragged my feet on getting those. And the two um, manga you see here are Kaze-san and and uh, the series is just like Kaze-san and Morning Glories and Bento and so on and so forth. Just a fun high school romance kind of story that I really enjoy. Well written. And now we're uh, time for some Manly Tears Gotham Academy second semester R.I.P. in peace. We hardly knew ye, etc. Picked up this variant cover in Cheyenne while I was there as well. They, ha they actually had a whole long box of variant covers, and it was almost all new stuff. So I was able to pick up some pretty sweet uh, variant covers. And we got to the final story here for Gotham Academy second semester. It was really good to see the uh, terrible trio in uh, the Rebirth universe. I don't know if they had an appearance before Rebirth or not, but yeah, just a a good book that didn't really get the attention it deserved from corporate. Uh, every, everybody I've ever seen on Twitter or Tumblr that's read it has loved it to pieces. So yeah, I'm just it's too bad, but. You know, Becky Cloonan has already moved on to Punisher, from what I've heard, so, yeah. We have Mother, Mother Panic, which is still going pretty strong. It's finally starting to reveal more and more about why uh, she's able to do the things she's able to do, and uh, the cost of being able to do those things, so pretty excited about that. It's basically a bionic woman. And the, the B-side story that's in the, in the back of Every Mother Panic is starting to build up to it. Seemingly its conclusion, I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be an ongoing thing throughout the entire history of Mother Panic, or if it's going to be different stories or not. But uh, definitely worth the four, the, the four dollars every month for this book, uh, which I can... I'm starting to have issues saying with other books that I'm getting right now. <laughs> like this one, uh, Trinity. It started off really good. You know, it was Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman interacting. And uh, eventually running into a problem and how they solve it. That was literally the first story in this new volume of Trinity. And uh, then it just kind of devolved into, okay, what's going on this month in the main DC Universe? How can we fit that into this book instead? And it's just annoying. Like, I, there's there's so many, there, all three of them are in so many other books. Like, it's completely unnecessary to pack it full of other characters and stuff. So, <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. Not sure how much longer I'm going to be getting Trinity. And then we have Wonder Woman, which is, as far as I know, it's still in its, uh, like, part, like, A story, B story format of twice a month. And, of course, the annual came out, and <laughs> I don't know what happened on the cover there, but the inside is really good. Uh, maybe I'm just spoiled by covers like this. <laughs> They're so good. Um. But yeah, Hall of Heroes had a uh, a shipment of new books come in, and instead of the usual tight shipped ba uh, boxes of comics and stuff, he got like a bag full of comics that had the the shipping label from the box it came in cut off and like taped to the bag, and so he was missing like half of his comic the comics that were supposed to come in, and a lot of the comics he got were damaged, and so. He just sent the whole thing back from what I remember him saying. So I haven't really... I've missed out on like a month of Wonder Woman, I think, already. So... But I, they should be on the new 
on a new storyline by now, I would imagine. So, Bombshells is a really good book and really great art and written very well with great characters. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> my main reason for getting it, or at least the reason I started getting it, uh, Batwoman hasn't appeared a single time in the last, like, seven issues. It's pretty nuts. I'm pretty sure the face for Poison Ivy here is based off of Natalie Dormer from Game of Thrones. But, yeah. Since, I mean, I can only sing the praises of Bombshell so many times, and so that's why I kind of skimmed over all those. Uh, Detective Comics is kind of having, having sort of the same issues, only that woman just started showing up again. She went like a six or seven, well, maybe five or six issue stint where she didn't appear at all. And the one time she kind of did, it was not as Batwoman, it was as Kate. So uh, I was starting to worry that maybe she was being relegated only to her book again, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore, thank goodness. Uh, these are both uh, variant covers here that I picked up uh, just on the fly. Or at least this one is. I don't remember if this one is or not. Uh, I actually recorded this video once before, and then I remembered I had to go pick up more comics the next day. So, and I probably could have waited to do it again this week, but I kept thinking, uh, if you put it off anymore, it's going to be two hour, a uh, two-hour video. So, I'm trying to keep it shorter so people might actually watch all the way to the end. Uh, the analytics are pretty hilarious to look at on these videos, so... Uh, anyway, I went on like a 10 minute ramble about why I didn't like this issue and why I don't like spoiler anymore. Uh, but basically she is being too pessimistic for a comic book universe. Like the whole point of comic book superheroes is idealism when you boil it all down and, uh, that's why I'm kind of not liking the Marvel movies lately, because people are always saying, like, well, I sided with Iron Man because he had the more realistic viewpoint. It's like, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, is Captain America is what you're supposed to want and what you're supposed to do. Not, like, what would theoretically work in our shitty existence that we currently have. So, which is what Iron Man was going for. So, yeah, that's kind of kind of the same argument that I'm going with spoiler here. And the fact that she gets suckered in by anarchy at the end. Or taken advantage of, maybe. I don't know how, how to put it. But, uh, yeah, just... I, I know it's going to pay off at the end, but this whole issue just bugged the hell out of me, basically, is the summary of that. Uh, and then we get a kind of a mini arc for Azrael here which was really cool, uh, starting with this issue, and then Intelligence started here with, of course, Zatanna, which is always great to see. She's, uh, there's kind of like, I always see the Bat family as like kind of a tiered system where Batman and the people he's literally related to would be like tier A, and then tier B is all people who wouldn't exist, or, like, uh, at least cooperate with him more often than, say, Justice League or something like that. So, like, Black Canary and Green Arrow and Mar Martian Manhunter and Zatanna would all be Tier B, and then Tier C would be, like, Superman, Wonder Woman, etc. So, uh Always good to see some Tier B show up. Uh, this was a really great arc. Uh, I kind of soured on Azrael a little bit. I didn't like the whole like holy symbolism and stuff that started happening with him. Uh, because I thought they had that with Zariel, the Justice League member from the 90s. And then it just kind of like, he just kind of got swept under the rug. <laughs> Uh, seemingly, so 
but it's it's written well here, and you can tell that uh, you can tell that James Tinian <laughs> the fourth went to a Catholic school, <laughs> as uh, he's talked about many times in interviews, because he nails the uh, the pseudo logic behind religion, and uh, and so he's able to write a convincing argument for what is basically a magic man in the sky. Um, which is, you know, that's always, it's always great when an author can pull that off. Uh, this part was really cool where there was just a new, like, Azrael, uh, AI inside a robot body, and it started taking over all of Batwing's drones and stuff, and it got pretty hectic, hectic, as you can see here. Uh, Kate actually saving Luke, which is a great arc for them, <laughs> considering how their uh, uh, companionship started. And then here's the after aftermath of a fight with uh, Azrael and Zatanna, of course, coming in to save the day. I just love the, the third panel there with <laughs> Kate experiencing healing magic. It's always a good, good stuff. Uh, I'm not. I guess this is a variant cover. I'm not sure if Cho did this one or not, but it's the the epic return of the John Paul Valley Batman suit, uh, which in in this universe and the Rebirth slash New Fifty Two, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a is a suit that. Uh, Batwing was developing for Azrael, if I remember correctly, and uh, he ended up putting uh, Buddy or whatever the the robot's name is, his AI that's based off of everything uh, the government knew about Batman, uh, and put that into the suit so they could transfer Azrael away from or John Paul Valley away from the Azrael AI uh, into the suit. And so it was a, a really cool moment to see the suit back and in action, even though they're, 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 they already said, like, at the end of the issue, he's like, oh, I'm just going to save that for special occasions, <laughs> basically. And this was just a funny uh, panel in the middle. And uh, I made a tweet saying that, my uh, my thirst for Batwoman, for a Batwoman, Cassandra Cain team up book is un unprecedented. <laughs> as of this, basically as of this moment, but for the entirety of Detective Comics, it's kind of been James Tinian has been kind of hinting uh, at them like working together at some point. So I'm hoping that pays off eventually. And finally, for Batwoman stuff, we have All-Star Batman number 8, which I used Comic Vine. I'm going to move my chair a bit here. Sorry for the weird noises. Um, I used Comic Vine to seek out how, like, what appearances Batwoman has made and what comics she's showing up in so I can get them as they come out. And unfortunately, I didn't read into too much about All-Star Batman Number eight, I just saw that she was included, uh, which you can see here. But it turns out this is a, I think it's Black Watch or like Checkmate. I can't remember uh, which organization it is, but basically these are all imposters that tried to come after Batman. So uh, even though she's here, quote unquote, I don't. I'm not sure whether to include this in the collection or not so I'll have to talk to uh, some of the people I follow on Twitter and see if they think I should include it or not uh, but yeah thanks to Let's Talk Batwoman on Twitter for letting me know about that I thought the cape kind of looked weird somehow like it didn't look quite like Batwoman so I think that's what it is like the the wings attaching to the cape here, I think maybe that's it, but I'm not sure. 
that might not be different at all, and I'm just <laughs> making stuff up, but I don't know. And I thought it looked weird, but I didn't think about it too much until I uh, talked to Let's Talk Batwoman on Twitter about it, so. Oh, uh, of course, there's actual Batwoman comics to get to. Uh, the first arc has ended, and here's some great show covers here. Uh, issue 5 is one of those uh, must-see issues. Uh, comparable to something like um, oh, the, the Hawkeye issue, where it's mostly in sign language. You know, it, to me anyway, that's what it feels like uh, because it takes place. It's a flashback, but it's also taking place. There's a fight between Batwoman and Knife going on as well. So it's just really damn good. <laughs> it's uh, it's like I, I don't want to say that the sto the story wasn't exciting leading up to this, but this felt like the emphatic punch that the series needed to really get going, I guess. Uh, Batwoman number six is out right now as I speak, and <laughs> it's sitting down there just waiting for me to come pick it up. I hope it, I ho I hope it's really good. I've heard that it's, since issue five was a flashback, issue six is meant to be kind of a flash forward, which I'm kind of worried about, <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens. And now, uh, for the first time ever, possibly, <laughs> question mark, a comic book haul video ends with something besides Batwoman. And uh, as you'll be able to see very quickly, uh, there's a very good reason for that. But first, Batgirl, Birds of Prey, number 10. I love the, these, the variant artists they've had for the last couple issues. It's been really good. I love the, the way he makes... Uh, the trio look together like you can it's a it's a a singular style is what I want to say and uh didn't I didn't have the variant for this one but like on this one you can tell this is the same artist that was on tens variant so and as you notice, there's a certain feline gracing the cover of issue 12, <laughs> which means it's that time again, as you've probably guessed from the title, it's time for a boatload of Catwoman comics. Um, and she, she and Poison Ivy are featured in this new, in this current arc. I believe it's over. Yeah, it's his finale at the top. Uh, but it ends... There's an ending shot of Batgirl basically going back to being Oracle for a moment, and Black Canary, Huntress, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman all team up just for one night, supposedly. We'll find out soon, but uh, and so I, I definitely was glad I stuck around with this series for that moment purely <laughs> on its own, uh, but also for these covers. I mean, they're really good. I'd like to see a new member show up. I'd, what I'd really like is for Barbara to just go back to being Oracle, but that's not going to happen. So, and I'd really like for the Batgirl to be taken out of the the title of this book, but if it doesn't have Bat, it doesn't sell apparently. So, unless it's Nightwing, I've heard Nightwing is selling really good for some reason. So, back into it again with more Catwoman books. Um, basically what happened before I went on my trip, I went to Wichita, Kansas for some reason, and went to Prairie Dog Comics, and they were having a sale of all back issues, with few exceptions, for $2 a piece, instead of the usual four and a quarter or something like that. And uh, so I... I cleaned up <laughs> out of the, in the Catwoman department, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to just kind of go through these. Like, with these, I didn't even know Catwoman ever had a team, and that's kind of what this is implying <laughs> to me. Uh, this dude specifically kind of looks like Grifter 
from Wildcats. I don't know what his deal is. I didn't. I'm I'm gonna skim over most of these because I didn't re bother reading them. I didn't think it would be a wise use of time. <laughs> uh, so, just having them is cool enough for me. So, although there will be some like uh, coming up that I. I looked up to see if they were actually like just self contained stories that I might be getting, so um yeah. Just volume two. As you can see there was a storyline called Contagion that I don't even remember, even though this was ninety six, I believe, nineteen ninety six, and I was in full comic book mode then. So well maybe not yeah. It's kinda hard to say. <laughs> It's been almost, yeah, it's been over 20 years since 1996, so it's kind of hard to remember, and considering everything that's happened since then, but, uh, I thought this was Catman, but, uh, I don't, I think it might be, like, Lynx or something like that, but yeah, <laughs> kind of same old story on most of these covers, uh, if you followed my videos before, as you can see, Catwoman in peril almost exclusively, <laughs> seemingly. Uh, I'm down to, I believe, 40 issues from having every Catwoman book now. 40, between 40 and 50. So, pretty excited about that. Oh, I just got an email. Uh, introducing Cybercat. Yay! And now, She-Cat. <laughs> Even more yay. So yeah, just more, uh, cat shenanigans, I guess, teaming up. This was a pretty abnormal cover, and so I was kind of like, whoa, that's, that's pretty sick. <laughs> and it says one of one, so I'm probably going to read that one before I put it away. And, uh, I also went to Hall of Heroes, of course, and uh, I decided, well, since I'm so close on my Catwoman collection, I might as well go look and see what he's got as far as Catwoman is concerned, and uh, so I went through literally all of his Catwoman boxes and grabbed every single comic that I didn't have according to my list and took him up and said, how much do you want for this whole stack? He said, he went through them and he said, oh, most of these aren't worth anything at all, so uh, I guess we'll just call it 50 for the whole stack. And I didn't have enough money for that, uh, so I split the stack and he held on to the other half for me. So now I was able to get, I think it was 32 more issues. <laughs> it was something crazy. Um, Two-Face seems to run into Catwoman a lot, from what I've noticed. Of course, Penguin always seems to have something going on with her. This one, I thought, when I pulled it out, I thought it was just a bunch of hands all over, and I was like, geez, they're really <laughs> pushing it with some of these covers, but turns out it's just very disgusting-looking spiders. Uh, was this Madam Web or something? I can't remember what her name is, but look at her spine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like so nineties, and gotta gotta love a good poison ivy cover here. Uh, these two are destined, have been destined for a long time to run into each other over and over. It seems, especially with a certain blonde showing up eventually. Yeah, nothing too. Too different outside of that skeleton cover earlier. Of course, there's the Long Night. Or no, not Long Night. Was it Halloween Night? Red Night? I can't remember what Vampire Batman was called in the Elseworlds. But, uh, yeah. Catwoman being a hero, of course. It's always fun. And this cover was, uh... This cover specifically was why I decided to pick up so many comics at Prairie Dog. Uh, I pulled this and it just blew me away 
Like, because this could be a cover now, let alone, what, 99, I think it what says there. So, I think, I think if you saw this on a newsstand, or not newsstand, like, because <laughs> comics are not... Comics are not on newsstands hardly anymore. Uh, but if you saw this in a comic shop, it would be something you definitely at least picked up to look at it closer. Uh, so I was like, well, if I gotta get this one, then I gotta get the rest of them. <laughs> so uh, it would be awesome to have a poster of this, that's for sure. And then back to <laughs> kind of the same old uh, normal style. In some of these later ones, she, I don't know if she got her hair cut or something, but her hair is not featured in the suit. I don't know what that's all about, but maybe it's a changeover from the animated series, I don't know. Fighting Underwater. No Man's Land was... No Man's Land was the first huge event that I can remember that, uh, like, there was zero hour, but that didn't seem to consume every book that I read. No Man's Land was hitting Batman, Robin, Nightwing, Teen Titans, Catwoman, you know, just, like, totally encompassing every hero in Gotham, so. And it was enjoyable, because it only affected a certain subset of characters from DC and everything they did mattered in each book, so you kind of had to read each book. And uh, so that's that's what I liked about No Man's Land. It doesn't seem like they've really been able to like, recapture that at all, seemingly. Um, and as you can see, it went on for several issues. I think from 60, 68 to... 78, maybe? So, almost 10 months. Yeah, so, like, another Penguin cover. <laughs> and then, uh, back to business, kind of, in a way, there. I thought for a moment that, uh, like, she had footy boots on or something in this, but it's just the way he shaded the bottom of her boot. And we're still not done. <laughs> Catwoman in jail. Nice, uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to say homage, but a reference to uh, sexploitation films of the 70s, uh, with kind of like the way a movie poster for one of those movies would have been done. Catwoman seems to run into a lot of ghosts, too, <laughs> is what I've noticed collecting this. And this could just be, you know, Lois Lane, as far as I'm concerned. She's got purple stuff on underneath her, but it's not like if she was reaching into her coat to get her mask on or something, it would be different, but uh, I don't know what story was going on at the time, but as you can see, <laughs> she dressed up a little different towards the end, um, but she eventually went back to the, uh, the old costume. I wonder, I guess I should look into it, but I guess maybe she had different personas, kind of like Spider-Man went through sometimes, where he was, oh, I can't remember the names, but he had several different identities that he went by. And this is getting down to the end of, uh, I believe that's Hawk and Dove 2 for each of them. I can't remember. <laughs> Catwoman using a sniper rifle. <laughs> that doesn't compute at all, but... Uh, maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. I don't. I don't know what this is, but basically, I have the last like ten issues of Volume Two of Catwoman now, which is pretty good. And of course, I also picked up some Volume Three, the lauded Brew Baker run. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna scoot through. This one is pretty timely, I would say, <laughs> as are several of them for that reason. For the the old uh, proposal issue. I like this one. <laughs> it seemed like the uh, the covers after Darwin Cook left could be really hit or miss. 
here's uh, War Games. That was a pretty big uh, Gotham event as well. I really like this issue cover. Um, it's kind of a, a very solemn looking Catwoman. Uh, and then we get to some more of these like stylized covers, which is pretty great. And then you get to this. So it's kind of like between Darwin Cook and Adam Hughes, it was just kind of up and down and up and down as far as covers go, which might have been why it didn't sell <laughs> that great at the time. Uh, but yeah, just lots and lots and lots of Catwoman. Pick that up. And uh, I somehow missed this back in the day when it came out, 2014. Uh, as, as you can probably guess, it has a lenticular cover. Uh, I had a lot of trouble finding it because I thought it was Catwoman five years later. But it, uh, I was just mistaken because that's what Batwoman's issue was called. Uh, so I kept typing in Catwoman five years later and nothing would ever show up. And so I finally decided to just pick this up. And of course, I was missing that. Uh, and uh, so it's in the collection now. This was another of the variant covers I picked up. Uh, was just kind of got it on a whim. <laughs> I think she was car charging. This was the other store in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I think she was charging cover price for a variant, so that's pretty good. She also, the, the lady that owned the store, didn't know what she had. And I kind of feel bad for taking advantage, but at the same time, you got to know what you got uh, when you're in the comic business. So uh, I got Catwoman number 38, which is seemingly fairly rare for whatever reason. And... Uh, it was the only issue from Volume 4 that I was missing, and I was missing it for over a year since uh, Rebirth started last year, so almost, I guess probably 13 months, I guess. It took me that long, and I had to go to a completely different state to find it. <laughs> but I didn't just find number 38, I found 38's variant as well, and they were both cover price. And uh, on Amazon, both of these were going for like eight or nine dollars, and then three to four dollars shipping on top of that. So there was no way I was paying that for that. I knew I could find it cheaper somewhere, and I got both of them for the cost of what it would have co cost me to get just one uh, on Amazon. So I was pretty ecstatic about that. And then I found this in the first Cheyenne store, Catwoman Election Night. It's a one-shot for $5. I think it must have been a, a repurposed annual issue or something, because Catwoman ended fairly abruptly, from what I remember. And uh, so it's like they must have had this going and were just saving it for a rainy day kind of thing. And then it just randomly came out January 2017, or that's when, when the, what it says on the cover there, but it probably came out December, late November. And I just never even heard about it. And it's, it's crazy because, as you can see from... I gotta do a lot of scrolling now. <laughs> so if you look at the... How far, man, just look how many freaking Catwoman books I got. Okay, so here's Volume 2's... Oh, still going backwards. That's not good. How many times did I hit it? Okay, now we're heading backwards. Or heading forwards, I mean. Computer's kind of chugging along right now, I think. So that's the Catwoman logo for Volume 2. And then here's Catwoman Volume 3's logo, which was, of course, stylized and huge. <laughs> I guess not. It's just, it stood out more, I guess is what I should say. It's not huge. But, uh, and then we get to Volume 4's logo, which kind of has the scratchiness to it, mixed with a little bit of Volume 2 there. 
then you get this, and it's like, where did this come from? Because, <laughs> and I, I bring that up because, um, since I'm getting really close to having the full Catwoman collection now, uh, or what I'm going to call the full Catwoman collection, I'm starting to look into how to decorate the box, and uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking for the lid, since there's four sides to the lid, I would do a different Catwoman logo on each side. And, uh, now I've got five logos. Because <laughs> there's, there's a super retro Silver Age uh, that's on the, the Brave and the Bold comics. And then there's Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, and now there's this. I'm like, man, do I really... <laughs> Do I want to include this or no? But uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, this is what the uh, what the old Catwoman box is looking like. I don't know how I'm going to squeeze another 40 issues in there, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. I really hope I don't have to... Uh, oh, excuse me. Start another box. Um... It would be really <laughs> crappy to start like a short box just for 10 issues or something. So anyway, that's the end of it. I hope this didn't turn out too long. Um, I've got uh, just posted that new women's wrestling tournament I did for the New Legacy Weekend. I've got three hours of Brothers footage from a stream I did a long time ago that I'm going to cut up into a highlights video, I believe. Uh, and then I, I'm thinking it's been a long enough time since I've played Andromeda, Mass Effect Andromeda, that I can finally get back to Mass Effect 2 <laughs> and uh, not be too frustrated about not having the jump jet uh, and the uh, ease of mobility that Andromeda had. So hopefully some new Mass Effect con content coming up because I'd really like to get through Mass Effect 2 and 3 so I can get to Dragon Age. Uh, the only problem with that is that Dragon Age 2 still isn't backwards compatible. Uh, which sucks really bad. Uh, I might end up asking someone that's sped run, uh, done a speedrun of it if I can just like commentate over their speedrun or something. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out what happens. But uh, Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. This has been POD7. Actually, before I do that, I just want to shout out my friends at New Legacy Inc. Because this is recorded after that weekend where they raised charity for the Can Canadian Cancer Research Society. I think it's what it's called. They raised over $27,000 for that. And they're a, re a relatively small channel. And uh, despite how long they've been going, um, their Twitch is been growing by leaps and bounds and uh it's just incredible it was inc it's been incredible to be alongside them as they've got gathered more people around them and their fan base has grown and grown to the point where they have uh wrestling uh, wrestlers from televised wrestling showing up on their streams in uh, Andrew Everett and Rosemary from uh, Global Force Wrestling, or GW, GFW. And uh, they even got retweeted by Road Dog Jesse James, <laughs> of all people. So that was pretty cool. That was a great moment. And uh, they're just so humble and thankful for all the uh, support they get. So you might check them out. I can't imagine too many people that watch me haven't checked them out. Because I imagine, if anything, I probably have people from them. Maybe one or two, three people. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, as far as stuff going forward, I would really love to get... Uh, I'll probably try to get WWE 2K18 when it comes out. And start doing like a week a weekly wrestling stream. Because I really love, I'm really getting back into wrestling now that women's wrestling is kind of gaining some steam finally. And uh, 
I just think it would be cool to have a weekly women, women's wrestling show uh, to post on YouTube. And it's not too hard to make, so they, pr they pretty much bend it over backwards to help you make your own <laughs> wrestling show in the game, so... Uh, we'll see what happens there. That's in October when that comes out. Uh, which, man, blink an eye and it'll be here. But uh, anyway, besides that, just been kind of taking better care of myself. Uh, lost a lot of weight. Blood pressure is down. Um, yeah, just uh, being a better person to myself in general. <laughs> It's helped out a lot, and I hope that came across in this video and the last video, but uh, anyway, thank you for watching. This has been POD7, and I'm signing out.